Hey everyone, it's Judy. In this video, we're gonna do this animation on iPad in Procreate step by step. Now here I have the old logo of Instagram ready. I got it from Google, but what I'm gonna do is draw it again so I can divide it and work with each part individually. So as you can see, I'm gonna start with the background. Uh, add some shadows do the brown area you're gonna see that in a minute i'm not gonna explain that very much but as you can see i'm just gonna draw it again and you can do that and then we can start with the animation Now that I've got the base ready, I'm not gonna draw everything of course, I'm, I'm gonna select the things that I can select like this insta here. So I'm just gonna use the select tool um, freehand and then copy paste it and now I have it on a separate layer and I'm gonna do the exact same later for the cameras. Now for the other camera, it's hard to select a circle so I decided to just erase around it so I can get the perfect circle and then just erase the entire logo. And don't forget to also do the shadow under uh, that camera, I did that and now I have the logo on separate layers, the full logo as you can see. Now I group them and I'm gonna start animating. So I'm gonna duplicate that base which is what I'm gonna start with. Now we're gonna turn on the animation assist in actions, canvas, turn it on and now I have this frames and I'm gonna group these two because one group means one frame. Now my idea is that I want the brown part to drop down and the page one to go up. So I'm gonna duplicate my group or my frame and choose the brown part and just get it up just a tiny bit using the transform tool and do the same thing for the page part get it down just a tiny bit and make sure you don't change their positions just exactly where they are just up and down and we're gonna start by small changes at the beginning and we're gonna make them bigger as we go along and at the end we're gonna make them small again so that's the idea so we can like ease them in and ease them out and in the middle they can be a little faster I'm gonna explain why I did that backwards. Uh, so I'm basically animating backwards because I have the final look. Like I have the final layer I want my logo to reach. So I don't need to start like from them very far apart and then just bring them together. I know what it looks like. So I can just do it backwards and that's so much easier than going like forward. Uh, some animation we're gonna go forward. Some of them we're gonna go backwards. You're gonna see that but it depends on your logo and as you can see at the end i'm making the changes smaller uh, to ease them out and when i play that i think it looks good yeah but it needs to be faster so i'm gonna increase the frames per second 21 i'm gonna change that later it's fine it depends on your movement uh how far you've moved them for example so it's okay yours could be different from mine and now I'm gonna go to the first layer and lower the opacity to 10 and then 30 and then 50 and then 70 just to like make them appear uh, but not like just pop in the screen I want them to ease in so the opacity helps a lot to do that and just increase it gradually until you reach 100 as you can see now we're gonna move to the next part which is the big camera i'm gonna duplicate the layer and take it to the last group now i also have the last layer and i'm gonna keep it safe because i don't want to mess with that so we're gonna work backwards again so duplicate the layer and take it to the previous group and we're gonna make it a tiny bit smaller we got changes in the middle and small again because i want it to pop and the reason why i'm turning off the base layers is because i want to see the camera on the next group how it looked like uh, how big it was and make sure that when I make my new camera or in the new group smaller I make sure that it's equal on each side 
as you can see if if they're turned on you won't be able to see the camera of course you can do this part like at the same time as you are doing that base but you don't have to it's easier that way you'll be more organized and you don't have to think every step in your animation through from the very beginning you can just come up with ideas as you go along so it's very easy to go back to frames and just make changes or add things very easy and then we're gonna do the same thing for the opacity these two steps are similar uh, i started with five here but of course it's up to you maybe 5 10 30 50 70 90 and 100 so it's up to you of course but uh, it depends on how you see it how it might look smoother it's up to you i'm gonna hold the duration so you can see it and i like that but as you can see the camera just pops and stops so it's not natural so to make it look natural i'm gonna duplicate the last layer the final product and pick the camera layer and make it a tiny bit bigger we're gonna do like three layers of these just tiny changes so to make it pop and get back to its original size and to get it smaller again you can make it small the same way or you can just duplicate the older groups and put them up front i hope that makes sense and when we play that it looks much better now and now we're gonna move to the next step now let's go back to my source group and duplicate the shadow that i forgot to add uh, under the camera of course and we're gonna do the same thing but uh, I'm gonna duplicate it like because when the camera is big I'm not gonna change that I'm gonna change it only when the camera is smaller you'll see that in a minute so just duplicate it put it underneath the camera layer and when the camera starts to get small get it small with it and then play with the opacity to make it appear naturally And when you play it, it looks good now. I'm gonna move to the next part, which is the camera and the Insta badge. We're gonna work with them together. I want them to appear at the same time. Again, take them to the final product, the final layer, and duplicate them, take them back a layer, and we're gonna start here. I want the Insta to start small and pop, and I want the camera to like drop down. These are very simple movements. Of course, if you have better ideas, you can do that, but I just went with the simple thing because I don't want to like waste a lot of time with this. It only took me a couple of hours to do this. So yeah, you can you can get creative with this of course. And here's a tip I wish I did. Uh, maybe you can merge the layers you've done already because it's a bit tiring to move these layers when you have so many to like scroll. So you can just if you're if you're sure of your animations just merge them together but i didn't because i'm not sure or i wasn't sure if i wanted to change anything and one other tip when you're moving the small camera or when we move the brown and page part as you can see there are some lines that show up to make sure that i'm not moving like left or right and that's by activating snapping so make sure you have that activated And again, you know the drill, play with the opacity until you make them appear naturally. And now I'm going to show you how easy it is to fix mistakes if you've done any. And you're going to see that when I play it, I like it, but the camera and the badge are very late. I want them to appear sooner. So go to the first group these start to appear in. Like the first group you have this camera and badge in. I'm closing the groups to make it easier to scroll, but if you merge these layers, it would be easier for you anyway. So just grab these two layers and take them four or five groups before that just to make them start sooner. And uh, do the same thing for each one. I'm sure it's it makes sense to you, I'm sure, but it doesn't look like it for me um, like on camera but it, it's easy to fix like because we're working with layers and we can just move them it could be kind of tiring but it's fixable 
And to be honest, I originally wanted to cut out this part and be like, yeah, I got it right the first time. But then I was like, why not show you how to fix that? Because I make a lot of mistakes when I'm animating and that's okay, of course. Uh, they're easily fixable. Once you've moved them all, like you've done uh, every layer, you can just delete the rest because these extra groups, you don't need them. So just delete them. Now this looks very much better, but it's kind of slow so i'm gonna increase the frames per second to 25 again i might change that later and you might have a different one it depends on your drawing now we're gonna work with the last thing the colors thingies i'm gonna duplicate everything from my original group and add them to the final group again this is the final product and i want to reach that with my animation now I'm just gonna close the groups, keep the place tidy. I'm gonna duplicate the last group with no colors a couple of times. And I'm gonna go to the colors and make them in one group so it's easier for me to duplicate and move them to another group. Other than like duplicating each, uh, each color individually and select them, you know. So I'm just gonna put them on top and we're gonna start animating. So my idea is to have the color slide up starting with the red and ending with the blue one and since we're working backwards we're gonna start erasing the last one that should appear which is in this case the blue one then the green then yellow and finally the red one but if you were working forward of course you're gonna start with the red one. So for each group I'm gonna erase like one by one and duplicate the group take it back to the previous group and do the same thing. As you can see, we reach the group where the Insta badge is getting smaller, so we have a gap now. So I just dragged down the colors to erase that, and I went back to all the groups and put the Insta on top of the colors group because that's the right order. You don't have to do that for the later groups, but uh, just do it when the badge is getting smaller so it wouldn't look like the colors are covering it. And here, instead of erasing, I just transformed the colors down so that's another way to make them smaller but of course it's the same you can do either as you can see the colors are getting a little too big for the badge so we're gonna stop here and lower the opacity to 10 maybe five it's up to you and even though the red is kind of like big but that doesn't matter because when you play uh, the animation no one would notice and it's fast and the opacity is very low so it's fine so just increase it uh, gradually until you reach 100% And when I play it, it looks pretty good, but again, we have to add that dramatic effect. So what we're gonna do is when each color hits the corner or the edges, we're gonna make them pop up a little and then come back to their original place. And I'm just gonna uh, do that for each color three times. And again, now the yellow has reached the, the edge, so I'm doing that. So you have to keep in mind like like just remember what you've done for each color so you wouldn't mess them up and yeah i hope everything is clear just for each color 
uh, make them bigger three movements and then get them back to their original size and that's it and as you can see i reached the final group i duplicated it and not like i didn't do anything to the final product i kept it safe as as i told you before duplicate and go back a group and work with that uh, just keep the final one safe like with no changes it's better and since we're only doing three movements the only thing that makes sense is doing the first and last movement small and the middle one kind of bigger just to have a bigger effect with fewer steps And now I try to duplicate the last group and as you can see it didn't allow me and I get this question a lot uh, there are like limited layers so if you face this problem you can just merge the old ones but if you've done that already you probably wouldn't face that and another way you can uh, solve this thing is you can just start on a new canvas just uh, duplicate the last group you have the last layers and take them to a new canvas completely and continue your animation there and when you finish you will have the same animation but like divided into two canvases and just save each video and uh, take them to a video editing app and just connect them together i always do that so for the later steps i'm gonna do them on different canvases and just like connect them at the end and now i'm really happy with the results and that's it for the video i hope you found it useful if you did please subscribe like comment that always helps there's more to the animation but i didn't want to make the video very long but i will post that video soon so please stay tuned i'm judy thanks for watching